And I, you know, I don't know if you saw, um, I mean, there's a degree of frustration about, about COP at the moment, mm -hmm. and, and probably rightly so. There's been yeah. some good announcements, um, but actually what I, I was reading that Mark Carney was trying to do was, was to assemble actually, I think it was 450 businesses together who between them control something like um, 20 or, four, if I forget the exact number, but 20 or 40% of the world's wealth mm -hmm. to say, well, if you can get those guys you know, it doesn't matter about government to, mm -hmm. to a point. If you can get those guys actually to say, we're committed to, to this route, that can have a real impact as well. And it struck me as a, as a, as a really interesting um, way, way to go. And mm -hmm. um, I don't think it needs to be a, a choice. I mean, we, mm -hmm. you know, we, we stand here on our own two feet. We had, um, we had capital monies, you know, it's mm -hmm. a public-private partnership to set this up. Um, but we get no government funding or, or anything um, now. So we have to be, if you like, capitalist in mm -hmm. in the, in our approach. Um, but it's about capitalism with a with a moral compass, proving yeah. that the system was actually yeah. the system that it that it was meant to be. Um, and I think we're we've we've allowed ourselves as humans to think that, um, or certain bits of our society have that 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 this five year double your money kind of return is the returns that 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 um, and. You know, if you like, sod the environment. Yeah, know, exactly. It to, to it's the short-term goals it's we the need short -term to try goals. and get away from. Yeah. And actually, if we can get away from endless consumerism and we can start to to actually think about um, how things are produced and and um, n not that we have to to buy all this this stuff, or that we might be responsible, by the way, for the things that we that we buy in the longer term. Mm -hmm. You know, some of these new technologies where you'll be I I be able to identify who it was that bought this jacket, mm -hmm. um, and that you're responsible for its for its lifespan, if you like. Um, through through um, through technology is is, is fascinating, and I think uh, they, these are all game changers. These mm -hmm. these these things, um, but we we do actually have to take some other other fundam We have to make some fundamental choices uh, uh, along the way, which aren't going to be very comfortable. And um, I, I was saying to you before we started, I, I was lucky enough to hear the Costa Rican president um, give a, a speech at, up in um, at, at COP26. Um, and he was talking about, we're quite lucky in Costa Rica in a way because everyone needs to plant trees. We're lucky we started 50 years ago or 70 yeah. years ago in 1949. Um, but we took choices. We don't have an army, mm -hmm. you know. And he said, you know, wars and terrorism. He said, are we really going to say to our children that um, we, we took that choice to invest in weapons instead of investing in the things that are actually going to get us out of this crisis? Um, and it was a really you know, it's a powerful call to arms. Mm -hmm. He then addressed why it was that Costa Rica was an example in, in, it, in itself. And, and he said, you know, we are, actually it's the same phrase, living, we're a living laboratory. That's what yeah. they signed up to be in Paris. And, um, you know, it, it's admirable. And they, and they have also got this, you know, he said, got to tell you, our electric infrastructure, you know, we're 100% we're renewable, 99.8% renewable, but our electric car re um, infrastructure is terrible, mm. he said. Which is why we've just invested into it because we, we said we, yeah. we realised we got it. and there was real honesty, you know, something yeah. that, that you that you see. So um, you might tell I'm a bit of a fan of the of, <laughs> of, of, of the country and and, and we have a oh, wonderful too, exemplar yeah. project there. But mm -hmm. we need more like that. Yeah, we definitely do. And I mean, Costa Rica is a fantastic example. I mean, I went there on a study tour, maybe I don't know, eight years ago or something like that. And um, it was really interesting how they approached some of the challenges they had because they had huge deforestation. But they faced this problem of, do we go in and we plant loads of trees and sod the people? Or do we work with the people to yep. try and create a holistic solution? And initially, I could be wrong here, I don't want to put words in any of the mm. mouths. It, it was a while ago I went there. Um, but essentially what they did was they, they banned deforestation. And then they found that actually people were still carrying on cutting down the trees to grow food and all this type of thing as people need to, to live. Yep. Um, and actually they realized, well, actually this isn't going to work because these, this is all the people have. They, they live off the land yep. here. So they started thinking, okay, well, how do we incentivize people to protect the rainforest? Yep. So what they did is they looked at the services that the rainforest provide and it provided water. So then they looked at water and they said, okay, what can we do with the water? Oh, well, actually we've got huge potential for hydropower. If we want to have the hydropower potential we have, we need the water from the mm -hmm. trees, from the trees transpiring. So they linked all that together and started paying people for the water the forest yeah. produced. And that is basically 
what common agricultural policy reform should be. Which and is, that's what it is, looks like it's going to become, which is public money for public good. It's all about um, paying farmers for the, you know, the air quality improvements, the improvement in the soil, um, the water, uh, the flood prevention, the water quality improvements, yeah. all of these things, and you know, better recreation for people. And it's that kind of mentality, instead of just giving people money to plant something, instead of giving people money for the land they own, it should be giving them, especially when it's public money, absolutely the slogan is right, public money for public good. That's what it's, it should it's, absolutely be used for. Well, and it, you know, payment, payment for ecosystem services, wasn't it? Was, yeah. the, was, their, was their thing in Costa Rica, which they, they, if you like, invented for the, um, for the world. And um, it, it was, when we didn't really want to do a project in Costa Rica, is, mm -hmm. is the truth. Um, and we, <laughs> we, we got ensnared uh, in, into it because of, by a story, actually, mm -hmm. by someone telling us this story. And... Um, uh, basically, the, the project that we have there is 10,000 acres of, of dry tropical forest, so the, mm. the rarest type and most endangered type of forest, that had been um, put together from 43 kind of low-level dairy farms um, in the late 90s mm. by, by one guy, a Danish entre entrepreneur called um, Peter Collin. And, and his thing was, I'm going to put the proper fire breaks in, and then I'm going to basically let nature take its course. I'm going to let the birds shit this back to life, basically. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and you know, if you look at it now, it's this. It is a beautiful um, yeah, rainforest. It's not technically it's dry tropical forest. Yeah. But it looks like a rainforest. Uh, Tim and, and I, our founder and I, were were in Paquera in the town, mm -hmm. and and sadly, Peter died five years ago, mm -hmm. and his sons were fulfilling one of his last wishes, which was to gift the water rights. Um, back to the town from the forest. Mm -hmm. And the mayor stood up and said, uh, there used to be murders and assaults and fights because we were always running out of water. Um, and now we have water 365 days a year and it's because of, because of that forest. Mm -hmm. He said, in this life, you don't very often get a second chance. Mm -hmm. We have been gifted one, let's not waste it. <laughs> and it was that moment, I can, I can still sort of feel the shivers on, mm -hmm. down my spine, it was that moment where we said, We've got to do this project, yeah. And the and the project is exactly is is if you like a microcosm of the macrocosm of the, the, that is Costa Rica, which is how do you have healthy people alongside healthy landscapes? Yeah. So what we used to do is put fences around things and say, don't go in there, yeah, you know, leave it alone. Mm -hmm. um, what what the Costa Ricans have, have realised exactly as you say is we we've, we've really got to just um, we've got to allow people to work with the environment, not mm -hmm. against it. Exactly. And, and I think if we could do that a bit a bit more here as well and. You know, there's there's all sorts of initiatives. You, you'll probably have talked to you know uh, about half Earth or the 30% by 2030 and all those sort of things, which are you know are kind of um, are an important part of this. But mm -hmm. we've we've got to just balance. Um, we've got to make sure that 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 isn't people grabbing hold of land and yeah. saying this is this is this is all mine, um, and um, you're not to come in because exactly. that won't work either. Well, exactly, and that's part of how we have to think these whole things through again with the public money for public good it has to be public good it has yeah. to be accessible to people and it goes back to what we were talking about initially about you know the the intrinsic value of the natural world to humans it's not just you know the water but obviously that's very important it's how do we live in it how do mm -hmm. we survive with it how do we integrate with it how do we interact with it how do we use it um, and we've got to think of all those things too and, and as I said take people with us and get them get them actively involved